Today I'm playing on the Hustler Casino livestream, which is one of, if not the biggest poker livestream in the entire world. But you all probably already know that. What you guys do need to know is that we're buying in for a whopping $18,000 and hoping to run it up big. I haven't run very well on Hustler Live in the past. Oh, Jack would be Max Payne. No way. Why would I say these things? That's, that is a defeated man right there. Pretty good player. He has run terrible on Hustler Casino Live. But we're looking to change all that today. In the first hand, I call with my Jack-8 offsuit and we end up going six ways to the flop. It comes Jack high on a Jack-9 four board and I bet really small here for $50 into the field. We get a few callers and pick up trips on the turn with the Jack of clubs. As you can see, we have Will in rough shape here. He has trips as well. And I decide to go for a little bit of value, half the size of the pot. Will decides just to call on this spot. We pick up another customer, Big John, with the king high flush draw and gutter to the straight. The river card bricks out for both opponents, which is great news for us. I'm gonna play a tricky here on my fourth showing at Hustler Casino Live. Mix in the check with the trips. Will falls for it and bets out for $800. I snap call with my kicker problems, but it looks like Will had a worse kicker. We're taking down $2,000 worth of profit in hand number one. Because this is Tuesday on Hustler Live, this is the anti game, which involves a lot more limping than raising. You're gonna call with a lot of hands because you already have $25 invested. So it's only 25 more bucks for me here with Jack 10 off. I decide to put in the call. We're gonna go a few ways to the flop. The action checks through on the flop. The turn gives us an open-ended straight draw. So when Dr. P bets out for 100, I put in the call and Dr. H does as well. We're in a three-way here with two doctors. Never thought I'd say that in my life, but we river a great hand, the king high straight, and now I go for value. Both doctors fold and we take down that $800 pot, which brings us into the next one here with king six off. Like I said in that last one, gonna be completing with a ton of hands. And as you can see, a ton of players put in the call here. Off to a flop we go, which comes king eight three. We flop top pair. Rampage fires out for $100, I call, and Dr. P does as well. The turn brings in the backdoor heart draw and the action checks through, giving me trips once again on the river here, and now I'm gonna go for a little bit of value. Both players find an easy fold, and that brings us into this next one. We're playing the knit game, or as they call it here in Los Angeles, the stupid game. Unfortunately, it's down to two players, Big John and myself. The bounty is high, it was $300, so definitely don't wanna be losing out on this one. I look down at Ace Three of Diamonds and make it $300 to go. We're gonna get a few callers and off to the streets we go, which comes Queen Jack Six with two diamonds. Pretty great news for us. Big John leads out for $2,000 and I have the nut flush draw. Probably could just rip it all in here, but in case Nick has a super nutted hand, I decide just to call here and see what he does. He folds his open-ended straight draw. I guess he just didn't wanna mix it up there with uh, Big John and myself. Both gonna be vying to win this pot and get a button in front of us. Turns a brick, it comes the nine of spades. Oh, I guess it would have made uh, Nick Vertucci the nut straight, but he's not in the hand. Big John rips it all in and I snap call. We decide to run it twice. The first board is gonna count towards the stupid game. And luckily for us, we make the nut flush on top. Big John is gonna take down the second one with two pair. Chop it up, guys. But even though we're chopping up that pot, feels like a huge win, not having to pay out the entire table. We're not busto, but we go into our pockets for an additional $10,000. I wanna be deep here in case we flop ourselves a good hand. A few limps, I decide to call with Jack 10 off. Nick raises it up to $300. I call and Morris does as well. We're going three ways to the flop. 10 high seems pretty great for my holding. Action checks over to Nick and he goes for a C bet. I'm obviously going nowhere with top pair, good kicker, backdoor straight draws, all that jazz. And we pick up a turn card, which comes the four of clubs. Little speech play here for myself and Nick. The action goes check, check. You see Cynthia behind Nick, she's anything. ready to go to work. Well, Did we just skip well, tell me if you do. the Robex? I got a little something. Step right, today? Then. I, don't want, I, don't like, I don't like little somethings. And the river brings in the king of diamonds. Not a great card for Nick to continue betting. I check, he checks, easy game. All right, in this next one, we see a strange limp from Rampage under the gun. I'm gonna raise it up to $300 with ace, queen, offsuit, the parking lot hand. Guest commentator here, Wolfgang brought in a fish to do this commentary and we get two players to call his nitty raise. And here, first to act from the under position with ace-king offsuit, obviously very good hand. 
want to get more money in the middle and let's raise it up to a bigger size of $2,000. Yikes, Ethan went for the old man coffee limp re-raise here to $2,000 and uh, I'm paying attention. A lot of money is on the line. I have basically an offsuit, it is the parking lot hand. Definitely don't want to go to the parking lot with this. Am I gonna put in the call? Could I four bet? My coach says four betting with ace queen off is definitely a great move, but Ethan knows that I'm kind of tight and uh, he should be raising a little bit tight as well. It's always a disaster when you make a big fold on a live stream with a ton of people watching, but uh, hopefully we make the right decision here and I muck my cart. Good fold. Who can out knit the other one, myself or Wolfgang? Well, Alex is the real winner here making a pretty sick discipline fold and he owns me once again on another high stakes live stream cash game. This next one is a fun one. Nick raises it up to $300 from under the gun. Gonna be a very strong hand. Will calls, Morris calls, and I am closing the action here on the button with the crabs and I put in the call as well. If I could pick a flop here, a queen four three board would definitely be it. Bang, we flop bottom set. Nick fires out for $400 into the field and Will calls as well. I debate going for a raise here. I also think about just calling, but given the fact there are two diamonds out there and Nick is very likely to have an over pair or a strong queen, I wanna start piling the money in now. I raise it up to $1,200 and Nick calls. Will calls as well, which is a little bit strange. He probably has a straight draw or a flush draw. Don't really think he's calling with a lot of pocket pairs between fours and queens, but you never know. The turn comes a four of hearts and now I'm scared about absolutely nothing. It pretty much eliminates any of the opponents from having pocket fours, so I essentially have the nuts. I guess the only other hand we could be worried about is pocket queens from Nick Vertucci from under the gun, but on this four of hearts turn, we can either go for a bet or check it behind to get a little bit tricky now that we have the board pretty locked up. When the action checks over to me, I think about both of those options. Betting makes a lot of sense because you want to put more money in when you think you're ahead, but also in these crazy live stream cash games, slow playing is sometimes the move because I check behind and as you see here, Will decides to go for a bluff with his pocket sevens and fires out for $2,500. I have a pretty easy raise here, but I don't know how weak he is in the moment. I go large and I raise it up to 12,500. Unfortunately, Nick Fertucci has a great hand, but not good enough to call. He does have the ace of diamonds blocker, makes the fold and will snap folds as well. Even though we turned ourselves a boat, we played a $20,000 pot and picked up $5,800 worth of profit in that hand alone. All right, we raise up the ladies from the plus two position. We're gonna get two callers from Morris and Francisco. Cutoff and button, both late position calls. What does that mean? They probably have some suited connectors, some pocket pairs, hands they didn't want to three bet with. So when we see a board which comes nine, six, five with two diamonds, not exactly the best board in the world for my overpair. Still, against two opponents here that are gonna have a pretty wide range, I think they're gonna be calling me with a lot of flush draws and one pair type of hands. So I go small here for $550. We're gonna pick up Francisco, who doesn't just call, he immediately puts in the raise to 1550, and now the adrenaline is pumping. Francisco going after the young guy. Does he have a set? Does he have a straight? Does he just have an ace five of diamonds type of hand? Or what about a hand like six, seven, nine, eight for a pair and gutter? Queens are definitely way too good to fold to just one raise. So I put in the call and the turn comes the four of diamonds. Not a great card because a lot of his raises are gonna have two diamonds. Still, when I check it over to Francisco, there's always a chance he checks behind thinking that I have a better hand than himself, but he is a pro. He calls himself Francisco the pro and uh, pros make very aggressive moves and firing out for $1,900 definitely would constitute an aggressive move. I am in a tough spot here with my over pair on a three diamond board with a possible straight out there. But uh, still, I get a little bit sticky, put in the call, and the river card comes about as bad as it can be. Again, the seven of clubs now putting a four liner to a straight. I told you this kid runs terrible on our show. Easy check for me. I am praying to the poker gods that Francisco checks behind and we can get to showdown here in this $8,000 pot. But it's not to be. Francisco goes for one last bet on the river, putting me in a tough spot. It's so small. It's $2,400 into an 8K pot. If he would've went larger, it might've been a bluff, although I can't really think about too many bluffs he would have. Still, $2,400 into this now 10K pot. I'm getting insane odds. I only have to be good here around 20% of the time, 
but is my overpair good against Francisco about 20% of the time? Word on the street is that he does not bluff too often. I make a disciplined fold and we see that we made a good one. 10 eight of hearts is what he had. That river rat Francisco got there with the seven of clubs. Great fold for me. I was calling when I was ahead, folded when I was behind. Can't play it much better than that. As you can see, we're currently not in a good spot, down $4,800. Am I gonna go 0 for 4 on the Hustler? The first three times didn't go my way. I was hoping to make some money tonight, but we have our work cut out for us. What better hand to look down at than my favorite one, pocket sevens from the hijack. Francisco opens it up with king 10 offsuit. I decided to put in the call pre, and the flop comes groovy, king 8, 7, bang! We flop bottom set again. Let's see if we can make more money than the last time when we had pocket threes. Francisco bets out for $800 and I just put in the call. Turns an overcard to the king, it comes the ace of spades and Francisco does not slow down, he fires out for $1,400. I think this is the inflection point of the hand. Am I just going to call or am I gonna start to pile the money in now? Well, if I raise this turn, obviously sevens, eights make a lot of sense. What other hands am I gonna be raising with? Well, I could have hands like five, six, I could have nine, 10. That's pretty much about it. I decide just to put in the call here, trying to get him to blast into me on the river and then I can raise him. The river card comes a brick, it's the three of diamonds and unfortunately he slows down and checks. When he checks here, he probably has some showdown value. I think he'd be continuing to bluff with hands like 9, 10, and 5, 6 himself. So when he checks, like I said, a lot of showdown value. And uh, if I go large here, it polarizes me to either a set, two pair, or a bluff. All right, now at least bet big and make it look like you missed with 9, 10. I have a lot. There's $5,300 in the middle. I decided to go large for 5,100. And this puts him in a weird spot. You can see he has king 10 offsuit. That ace on the turn was not what we wanted to see. He's still thinking about it though for a while. Probably thinking if I could have 9, 10 here in 5, 6, which I definitely could. I'll show up with some bluffs once in a while, but he makes a great fold, mucks his cards, and we're taking down that $10,000 pot. The knit game is back on. I raise it up to $600 with ace, king off, and kind of the way I've been running on Hustler Casino Live, I whiff the board and have to fold. No fear, ace, king offsuit is here once again. I make it $300 to go from under the gun, pick up a few callers. Whiff the board once again, Dr. H bets, Dr. P calls, and I fold. So back to back hands with ace, king, flopping myself absolutely nothing. But no worries, I look down at ace, queen offsuit this time and raise it up to $300 from the plus two position. We whiff the flop once again and the action checks over to Francisco, who he bets out for $300. Rampage calls and uh, I'm tired of whiffing the flop and folding with these strong pre-flop hands. I decide to peel here with some evil intentions and the turn comes the eight of clubs. Action checks through on the turn, bringing in a great card for my range, the king of diamonds on the river. This is exactly why I floated the flop to pick up a strong card on the Turner River to bluff on and uh, the action checks over to me. There's $2,400 in the middle and I fire out for $900, making it look like I have a hand like King 10, King Queen, King Jack. Action folds around to Ethan, who thinks about it for a while. I just think bluff. No, dude, I have fucking paid this guy off way too much. Time. I have a six, but I think bluff. What the fuck? If you have a six, you're good. Oh, show him. And uh, old Wolfgang here is gonna get this through when he folds his ducks. We show the ace queen there and uh, taking down a nice pot with a bluff on the river. In the last interesting spot, we have ace nine with the ace of spades. I go for a bluff on the river with the ace of spades, somehow get Dr. P to fold a straight. He has five deuce off for the four, five, six, seven, eight straight. Rampage has nothing and folds as well. And so it seems like the only way we can win here on Hustler is if we flop bottom set or we go for a bluff. Bring it to the V-pips. You can see I'm V-pipping 43, which is second to the bottom, but look who's on the bottom there. Old Rampage, what do you gotta say for yourself? You lose a million dollars, Wolfgang, then you'll play like a knit just like me. That's gonna wrap up the session. I was in for 18,000, added on for 10K in the middle there, got out for 24,325. So yes, indeed, I am 0 for 4 on Hustler Casino Live. Loss of 36.75 in around five hours of play. It's no wonder they keep inviting me back. Had a super fun time here in Los Angeles, hanging out with Ethan as well. If you guys like this video, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button and click on the screen right now one of my other videos if you want to continue watching. I'll catch you guys in the next video as always.
Peace.